Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th Chebcast. In this one we're going to be discussing necromancy gods and deities. And we're here with Sohai for Hentai. Hey yo. It's Ghost UK. Hello. And special ghost, special guest, sorry, Mr. Spook. Hello. And um, I know for sure that Mr. Spook has got some really good ideas because he told me about it briefly. Mr. Spook, would you like to tell us about the gods in your setting? Yes. So in my setting, there's three eras of gods. In the beginning, there was only two sentient races and no gods. Humans and the dragons who had recently become sentient. When these beings that they called the transients happened upon our world, deciding to create the first races based off the template of humans was the exception of two gods that would become the so-called patron and matron of humanity as they felt sorry for the humans who would soon be outrun by the other races the other transients had uh, made. The second era is after the transients has left, as their name implies, they go from place to place. They had created a guardian deity for each of the races, and these would be known as the Old Gods. While shrouded in mystery, most have gone missing except for the one of the Mer people that lives in the sea, Epoch, which would lead into the era of modern gods. So in this setting, people aren't sure where they come from. Some they believe have descended from mor mortals, and some they believe have come just from nowhere as it's very cultural based as we almost as i like to parallel religion in our own world to my setting the fact of the matter and the truth behind it is all of the modern gods are ascended mortals after reaching a certain point of power every mortal can in a way ex how do i explain this um reach apotheosis almost where their own magical power fundamentally changes them into a new divine being as they give away their i say humanity but it's any of the races will turn into this new form if they accept the power when they reach this kind of apotheosis but this is very much kept secret as the gods themselves for the most part uh, it's very uncommon to happen, and they want to be worshipped more. And to some of them, viewing themselves as like Ben Mortal either bel uh, belittles themselves or they fear would make them less worshipped. Because in my setting, when you worship a god, what you're doing is letting a little bit of your power go to them and letting you them use you as a conduit to see and feel around them. And that's how the gods are able to have like so much information and so much control as their own power and then as well as the connection to their worshippers. This is especially so with clerics in my settings who will actually hinder their own magical development to become conduit completely for their deity, which allows them to have much more magical power, but basically useless if their deity if they displease their deity or for some reason their connection is cut off. In the form of necromancy, right now I'm still working on a lot of the cultures of the god, but I have three ones that I've already been working with. The first one would be Saria. In her lore, for the, her worshippers, they believe she was the first being to have transcended to undeath and is the mother of all necromancy. The legitimacy of those claims is very much debated, but it is heresy to claim anything different for her worshippers. On the other continent, near more of the uh, mountainous regions, you have Nal Am, the so-called Undead Undead Herald, and he was supposedly the greatest lich to have ever existed, and at one point almost conquered half the world before he reached apotheosis. His worshippers believe he was a mortal who ascended through lichdom. And then finally averaging up is Sorik, who is the first vampire and created what 
vampires called true bloods, a so-called blessing that is a form of vampirism that is close to how vampirism as a curse function, as not the disease, because there's multiple variants of vampirism. But these true bloods are usually much more powerful and are not weakened by the sun like you'd see most vampires. Well, not killed by the sun. They're still kind of weakened, but are much more powerful than the disease-created variants or lesser curse variants of vampires. You have any questions about any of uh... Yeah, I got some. So, like, my first question would be, do the gods grant any kind of magical power to their worshippers? Yes. So, like I was mentioning with clerics, so when you make yourself a conduit for the god, you open yourself up to gaining a portion of their powers they can bestow upon you. And thus, you act as kind of like, when you fully worship a god, right? They can see anything you can see, and they know everything you know. For clerics, though, they fundamentally change how their magic develops to allow them to instead taking the power from the magic around them, they take it directly from their god. And in return, their god can see a lot more and gain a lot more of the passive mana they would have gained. Because, like, in this strategy, for the god, giving a small amount of power in the long run for them is worth it because with the more worshippers they have, they have more points to where they can harvest the mana in an area. So it's kind of like a gains kind of thing. Like, a small god probably wouldn't have many clerics because it wouldn't be worth the cost, but a much stronger deity would be more willing to have clerics and a lot of them because it allows them to gain a lot more of the power around. And so, like, where does a god's power come from? All of the modern gods at one point had been mortals. And in my setting, as you grow more powerful, you develop what is called a mana crystal, and then it evolves and such. And that's by casting magic, and you... In the world, magic is kind of like a fundamental force that exists ev almost everywhere. And you can slowly absorb that, and mana crystals, as they develop into better forms, basically have more efficiency of absorption. But at a point, they, like, reach a point where you reach apotheosis, and they expand and basically become an ethereal thing instead of a physical object called a divine spark, and can evolve even further into what makes you a god, which is, like, the uh, divine soul as it fully integrates into your soul, but that's where they get their power. It's mainly, they were already powerful before. And then, through worship, they can use it to gather even more power to basically, like, because they went from a mortal and transformed into a whole different divine being through this apotheosis. Right. and uh, If that made sense. Yeah. Do they ever, like, do war with each other? Yes. But in my setting currently, for what I have written in the lore, there's a big dead space in what's known in history where there was a large war between divines. But at the point right now, most of them are at peace through like godly laws they've made for each other because war between them is so devastating. And because they've already been like out of just out of a time of strife, they're trying to stabilize. What would happen? But sorry. Hmm? So you, you got but it. with the war, I just wanted to clarify real quick. Yeah, it, it's for the gods. Once you've reached apotheosis, you're not a mortal anymore. You can't really die. There's very few ways to truly kill a god, and the best way to deal with them is to seal them away. And at most, even another god trying to kill a god will just weaken it if it dies, and then they seal it somewhere. So. Fighting amongst the gods isn't really a profitable venture for any of them because they don't keep down very often. Right. So, um, if the gods sort of cannot be killed off easily, then, um, like, how do they, how do they stop, like, I, I guess they'd want to stop people ascending, basically, because otherwise they'd just be all these gods that no one could get rid of, right? Um, as for the Ascending, uh, it's very difficult to do so. You'd have to become a very powerful mortal 
in even in the world there's a small amount of gods because of how difficult it is to get there so that's not really an issue for them as for when a god is a problem for everyone right and enough gods are like okay we're gonna deal with this they're sealed away in what are usually called vaults where they're soul is condensed into something and then thrown and locked away as so their influence can't go and reform their godly form and they're kind of just shit stuck in an area with like usually something to prevent them from slowly gaining power and stuff like that this is kind of like think of it of like complex dungeons locked away in as to prevent anyone from uh, trying to bring them back Right. Um, one more question. Uh, what do you think is like important for like, how do you connect the gods to necromancy? Like what makes a, a god of necromancy a necromancy god or whatever? Usually it's just their affiliation in their past life for the setting. Um, there's usually like it'll the gods will basically be like it, there's no domain lock like gods don't fight over the same domain so it's fully based on that so for Sorok, like i said the god of two vampires he he cares more about the vampires because he was himself a vampire and he views them as like his children with a form of elitism and then with like the lich He's he was a great lich, so necromancers usually go and flock to worship him because they were they he is what they always want to like he is something to look up to and strive to be like from his prime as a mortal. But nothing stopping from a new necromancy god becoming a god or some other deity who doesn't usually forte in necromancy becoming a necromancy god due to cultural shift. Right, right. Hmm. I don't think I've got any more questions. Anyone else? Yeah, no, but not. like, I don't really have too much in my thought process going f towards that. You pretty much have, uh, you pretty much like asked everything. Yeah. What about you, Ghost? Uh, nothing. Nothing comes to mind. It's um. It's an interest. It's an interesting setting, and I'm curious as to how it will develop going forward. I really struggle with gods in my setting. Like it's mm. probably the the most difficult thing for me right now. And um, I was hoping that this podcast would be able to help me sort of design some gods in my setting. It's pretty difficult for me for some reason, probably because I'm I not. Feel I feel like I feel like that's a common, like a normal thing these days. Because we're in the world right now where information is easily at our fingertips. We know that there's a logical, scientific explanation for so many things. So when it comes to topics of um, mythology or with religion or with belief and gods and shit, it gets very sort of awkward quickly because. There's a lot of people that will be brought up with religion and it will be very present in their lives, so they know about it more. But when you have people that don't have that, or they've uh, been raised a certain way, or it's not something that is expressed, or it's not something that is uh, in their lives a lot, it can be quite difficult. Yeah. Because how do you how do you do it when you don't know how to do it? I think that's exactly also, the problem I have. I also think the fact that when they are known to be existing beings, it becomes a lot harder. Because when you have them be like, they might exist, kind of like in religions ourselves here, they're a lot more malleable and you can have them much more cultural based but there's a solidity to it when they're existing beings and actually exist in the setting I feel like there's mixed ways of doing it like this i mean anything can be can be done in a good way so long as you do it in a way that is appropriate for the idea of the concept but you know, when it comes to gods it gets awkward like it gets like the line gets blurred because how do you do it you have a gods to personify concepts ideologies or beliefs 
So it has to, like, if it's a god is a character, but it has to adhere to what it represents, and it can't do much outside of that. Or if it can, it has to be explained as to why. But then you also have the effect as to this god influencing the world around it, the uh, the, pe the followers of the god and what they will do, so on and so forth. But then you'll have how the beliefs will change in, uh, in the future, how the people will change, which will consequently, depending on how you do it, change the god. So you can have it where... At uh, uh, year one, God will be this, 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 and this, and year 500, it will be completely different. Or after a thousand years, it could be completely different, and it could be a polar opposite to what it was before. So there's that, but then you'll have stuff like the Greek, uh, like the Greek gods that are more sort of drunken, hormonal idiots most of the time. They just do whatever they want. They represent certain things, yeah, but they don't really do much with that. It's like, take, take Zeus, for example. Yeah. He had a whole thing with thunderbolts and lightning and stuff. But if anything, he was spending more of his time, you know, doing Zeus stuff. Yeah, like abducting women and stuff. Yeah, I was trying to figure the best way to say it, whether that's <laughs> PG-13. Yeah. Uh, like, turning himself into a swan and... Turning himself, I'm not. Um, I, no, I'm not, not going to finish that one. If if you if you're curious to know what he does, just just search him up. Like he's pretty much, <laughs> he's he's done enough crime to get put in prison for a long time. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dick. Let's be honest. <laughs> but at the same time, that's kind of to be expected as someone in that kind of position. Just like, if you're in that high mini power seat and no one can do literally anything to you, what's the repercussion at that point? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like it, it, it is. It, like, what are you supposed to do in that situation? <laughs> it's just like God says, "I don't like how your house looks. You really got to change it up." It's like it is what it is. It's I can't I can't help but think that with 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 that aspect to it as well. You've also there is that, and that and that kind of goes into with the personality of the God. Like, is it a wise God that will uh, have a very just, on a honorable or moral based? A way of doing things or will it just be Zeus who fuck you it's Zeus he's going to do this he's going to do this oh what's this you've got a beautiful daughter nope Zeus is, Zeus is uh, bride now Zeus is concubine oh what's this you've got a horse oh. bam it's it's Zeus's now yeah what's this you've got a house or oh, Zeus doesn't like it. he's going to throw a thunderbolt at it why because he's bored I've got an interesting question for you guys how do you feel about the dichotomy of having good and evil gods as like there being a dogmatic good and evil and the deities like representing that and stuff. Yes and no. It, yeah, it largely depends on the setting. I think like with, um, I think that like Warhammer Forty K does it quite well because you've got the warp and you'll often say that you'll have the more evil gods on that shown. But the thing is with that is that you'll also have good ones as well because it you'll have that magical system representing all thoughts and emotions everywhere. So you, the goods, the bads, and the ugly. So you'll have ones that will be nightmarish, hor horrifying demons, and you'll have other ones which will be good, nice, pleasant, so on and so forth. They're just not shown as much. So it's like, when it comes to good and evil, or good and bad, it's, it's more, I feel, kind of like a moral guidance system. It's like, you know, you know how when it comes to in real life, we have good actions and we perceive them as good because of this 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 and this and you'll have bad actions and you're not supposed to do these because of this 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 and this like you have to do the concepts of justice honor revenge you'll have concepts of oh yeah if you do this and you go to prison to kind of like guide people and what to do and not do and having gods that represent those say in a fantasy world where they actually exist or could actually be people does help to put to convey those forward it's like oh yeah if you live a just life then you'll be with this god and you'll have these rewards if you do things badly you'll be with this god who's going to wrap you in a cage and put you in a massive bondage truck and take you down to hell and there's going to be foot and it's going to be bad times and also he's going to scrape his fingernails on your back and the fingernails are about two inches long and the smell of garlic <laughs> yeah um the, the problem I have with, like, the strictly good and evil thing is that, um, like, what in in life is strictly good and evil? There's not many things. And to to try and sort of pigeonhole a god into that kind of thing, it just seems a bit strange to me. Like... It's, it could be done for law reasons. Like, say, for example, you'll have two gods that do good things and one of them backstabs the other. 
it's like oh yeah you've got Cain and Abel Cain disables his brother so then you've got Cain who's bad and Abel who's good so you can have Abel who's good but disabled so his actions are or his good is held back by his disability and then you can have Cain who is bad who does this 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 and this based on the actions that he's done so they use that as a moral uh, guideline to oh yeah if you like the if you do anything reminiscent of what that god did you're a bad person like it could but yeah. what is the incentive to worship like an evil god i mean like they're the friggin evil do you want to be in their version of the afterlife like, that, i mean it's usually just like you know to have power immediately mm. just like for that media power is usually more than enough for most people isn't it kind of like the whole thing with like worshiping demons? It's like, oh yeah, you worship demons when you die. What what happens then? Oh, I get a manager position, so I get to torture people like you. <laughs> for That's my setting, point. what I've had it for the alignments of God is there's no dichotomy of good or evil. It's kind of like a moral relativism kind of system where anyone who worships a god, it's like, oh well, my god's obviously right, and the other gods, if they don't agree, are bad or evil, kind of deal. So it's everyone believes their gods in the right <laughs> also be justification as in you know uh, i follow this religion my actions are justified yours or not i'm in the right you are not in the right so on and so forth you mean for mr spook's setting or or just generally yeah. is something happening <laughs> i have no clue um we might have lost someone or something i don't know Well, like, like, uh, connection issues. Maybe. Do you want to repeat your your question, Ghost? I'm not trying to remember it now. Um, it's, it's like when it comes when it comes to like historically, like with justification, yeah. Yes. Is you'll have it where you'll have um, you'll have two people of different faiths, and you'll have one person saying, "My God is the true one; it's the morally correct one; it's the right one. Your God is bad, so therefore, what you're doing is bad, so on and so forth." I'm justified; I'm in the right. You will have a lot of people that will have that, like, and I can't help but think that the reason for it is that when it comes to the whole thing of good and bad, it's more to sort of justify what they're doing, as in they know what they're doing is bad, but it's justified because their faith in God is good. Therefore, it's a bad deed for a good result, or it's it, they're doing a bad thing for good reasons. As similar, similar to similar to the whole thing of like, um, oh yeah, I'm doing a bad thing, but it's fine because it has this context to it. Well, for my setting, it, it's like that, but it's more so like, imagine you know how we have cultures in the Amazon that eat people, cannibalism, right? And you'd call that morally right. repugnant, except mm -hmm. for those tribes. It's kind of like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's more when they worship the god, they don't see it as a bad action they're doing that's justified. They see it as. What do you mean this is wrong? Of course I eat people, or of course I raise undead. What? What? Why would that be yeah. weird? But um, in like the case of D&D, &D, it's like kind of like the people worshipping an evil god know that they're worshipping an evil god, and they know that they're evil as well, and they kind of like relish that, right? When it comes to settings like D&D &D with the evil and good, I, I'd have to agree uh, with... I have to agree with so high for hentai. I, I think it's a lot of time for like easy power, but there's definitely probably people in those settings who just be like, oh, that God's evil and I agree with what he does. Uh, he's into hardcore torture. Hell yeah, I'm down with that too. And would worship him for that reason. Yeah. No, as I say, it's like a Slanesh deal. Like, you know, I could follow the God Emperor or I could get five dicks and have four testicles and follow Slanesh. <laughs> Yeah. I got another question for you guys. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about the idea of having no gods in the setting? Ooh. Having no gods at all in the setting. I think it would have to be done delicately. Like, gods are a very, very, very big thing when it comes to not, not just humanity, but in intelligent life in general. If you'll have something that is intelligent, something that can think for itself something that has independent like it i mean you can make the whole argument of oh humans aren't independent they're still uh, enslaved to their 
you know, their chemicals and hormonal processes and their own basic biology. But yeah, but still, you will have things that people will believe in order to live a certain lifestyle that they believe is good. Like you'll have uh, people that will not do certain things or do other things or only live a certain weight in order to follow a certain path. But gods and deities and all of that are very, very, it's normal with evolution. It's normal with um, thinking. It's like you'll if you can't explain something, you will come up with something to explain it. It's like, why is he dead? I don't know. Maybe the spirits or the ancient god in the sky has struck him down so that his soul may rise and join the clouds above us. Every cloud is a soul. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. So to have no gods, I feel like it would have to be done in a way where in, say, for example... Um, <clears throat> The setting could be set in the Dark Ages after some kind of massive conflict. All of the gods are dead. Uh, nobody knows what's going on. Stuff like that. Like, that, I feel, would work. If you've got it wherein the gods have fallen silent, or if everybody sort of had something to stop them believing in gods, or something along those lines, or maybe there was something to prove the inexistence of gods, which led to a great, say, moral vacuum, as in people were doing whatever they wanted, and a lot of people became depressed or apathetic, stuff like that. Like, if, I mean, take Game of Thrones, for example, it's got a, a very little magic in it at the start, but even then they still have gods in it that have a relation to the people and how the people will do things because they still have gods that they follow. Uh, when you ask that question, I'm asking, it, it, are you talking about, like, the lack of any religion or the lack of, like, gods that exist and it's just all superstition? The, the, the lack of gods that exist, like, people would probably still, like, worship things, but there, there'd be no, like, gaining powers, there'd be no kind of acknowledgement of that worship. Kind of like in real life, like, you know, you can... I was going to say, like, oh, real life then. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, I, I think that works fine in any kind of setting, honestly. Uh, I'm, I'm not... I'm trying uh, to think. I'm not too sure. It's kind of hard to tell, considering, like, after a certain point, it's just, like, basically, like, being a god, it's just kind of, like, it's more like just a position. Like, just the height of power you achieve. Something, like, uh, similar to, like, Mr. Spook, like, like uh, basically, uh, all the gods were mortals, once, uh, mortals at some point. They all just kind of, like, found their own way of... Uh, you know, ascertaining the godhood, ascending, or, you know, probably just, like, you know, getting immortality or something like that. Basically just living to see everything, then just, you know, be able to actually reach that height of power. Then you could like, it, you could just say, it's like, if you practice and preach to this one god, they'll maybe, like, you know, give you a piece of information or something to help you about whatever you're actually doing. Oh, like divining? Yeah, like, the, like just, like, divining, divine intervention, basically, then it's like, okay, so... You praise me for about like a year or two now. I see something's about to really fuck you up. Okay, listen. Here's a good uh, Linus tech tip on how to use your fireball spe spells better. Um, something I'm curious. I'm um, something I want to say. When we're thinking of gods, we're thinking of uh, the we're thinking of a, of a being which encompasses certain concepts, or a being that encompasses or personifies certain beliefs, right? What about more Lovecraftian ones, say, being so beyond mortal comprehension that they are, uh, like, that they will be, um, like, it could be a single cell organism that's bigger than a planet that has reality warping abilities and mortals worship it, not because it represents anything, but more because they, they perceive that it represents something and worship it based on what they think it represents. Yeah. I and it could, and it could, Yeah. I love this kind of thing, and I, I already have it in my setting, like, sort of Azasov kind of beings and um, mm. things of that nature. That's what the whole um, the whole Void Cooler Summoner is in the setting I'm working on, is that they're basically like the servants of these things. I think that's really cool and um, definitely explainable and, like, kind of understandable. More so than, like, a standard god, in my opinion. Uh, in my settings, they're not based off concepts, but some powerful being like that would, if known, would probably be worshipped as a god because there'd be no intrinsic difference to most people that, that they know that differentiate that from like just a normal god. Um, when it comes to... Right. Uh, when it comes to necromancy gods, how would any of you... Like, if any of you were to make a necromancy god, what would you make? 
Hmm. Uh, I kind of guess it's like an idea, but like what I do for myself, but it's also kind of tell because I'm just kind of going at the top of my head, just more or less winging it. Um, I basically just have like a necromancy god as just like just someone who's just you know more or less immortal, but they also found a way to make themselves no longer f- uh, physically present anymore. And so it basically just it was just generally around, but they're just kind of doing whatever they want. Um, and because I was like I favor this, and I guess you could call it my own setting. They don't really know the origins of the necromancy power itself. They're the god of necromancy. That's because it's more or less um. They know the most about it. They pretty much like research the most about it. They've lived for eons. They've seen it. Uh, people, other people practice it from like little to high up. Like. When people worship him or he gives them like that, like what I uh, said something about earlier, is like you worship him and maybe he'll give you a piece of information about what to do. And if you like help, like how do I say, like uh, develop necromancy to be even further, you'll probably be like uh, uh, re- uh, re- revered as like a priest or a saint of necromancy or something like that, or like you know high up on that fucking echelon. And like the god will also say, like, okay, okay, cool. Uh, you found that breakthrough, right? Okay, here's a bit of this information to uh, see if you can break that through. Uh, here's a bit of this to uh, see if you can break that through. Just kind of like a guy, just more or less, kind of like having all this knowledge, but is also willing to like try to help expand it, more or less. Or it's like if he's trying to achieve a certain goal, it's just like maybe this will help uh, improve necromancy later on. Or it's like maybe there's an artifact in here. Uh, he'll also try to provide a bit of support, but. Other than that, he's not. Uh, they would probably not really actually try to interfere too much, because like, yeah, they got a neck prance, but they're just more or less just like some immortal who's willing to help from time to time, but just more or less kind of just cares about himself, since it's kind of hard to tell why he would descend to the mortal plane or like uh, talk to others if if it does interest him. Yeah, um, for me, it's kind of like I find it difficult to think about like a god of necromancy in the kind of like abstract sense but i find it much more easy to conceive like a demigod of necromancy as like a very powerful being that's like physically there and it's like kind of kind of like a grim reaper type yeah or even like a fucking lich that's so powerful that it's to the normal person, like basically a, a god. And that could actually be very interesting. Like a lich, say you could have one that's 2,000, 5,000, or however many years old, waking up from its slumber. Like, you know, when you wake up and you need the desperate piss and you're just there, like, Hurr. imagine if it does that and it walks out and people see it and they start worshipping it. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if you were an, an, an aspiring necromancer and you wanted to get that kind of power, wouldn't you seek out and like worship such a thing if that was a valid way of getting like necromancy skills and whatever yeah yeah or if anything you'd want to get on its good side to learn from it's like oh teach me teach me i I will do this i will do this i'll do this can you at least fuck off no (laughs) yeah but this is a bit like how it works in the dominions games if you've if you've ever played those games it's basically like You've got these, they're called pretender gods, and they're mm-hmm. basically like demigods. And you play as one of these, and they all have okay. to battle against each other. And they've got different, um, they've got different um, sort of dominions. And these these dominions are like the properties of of these gods. For example, one god might have a death dominion, and it makes the the land over which it has power kind of deathly and sickly. And there's also gods that go in the other direction. Anyway, all these all these demigods called pretenders have a big battle. And the one who wins goes on to become the Panto Creator, which is like the, 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 like the overgod or whatever. And then something weird happens, then the cycle just continues over again. And like that kind of thing, I can really understand or envision like gods of necromancy because you've got these demigods that are literally spreading their influence across the world. Like you have dead forests, dead things popping up everywhere because of their necrotic domain and all of that kind of thing. And it would be very easy to worship these things and get necromancy powers because of what they represent and what they're actually doing to the world. 
but if it's more of like a nebulous concept like i don't know like your your typical maybe even your dungeons dungeons and dragons god where it's kind of like he's kind of like just up there and somehow you get magic from him just, that amuses me a lot. It's like so maybe it's up there, you know, just chilling. Maybe get magic, maybe not. You know. Yeah, like what they I mean, it's, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too much about like what the gods in D and D are doing. I, I know they have battles and stuff, but they're it's, not really doing it on I don't, the plane. I don't know that much when it comes to. The, I do when it comes to D and D. I do know that I feel like there's a, too much stuff in it sometimes. Yeah. Like yeah. Isn't there like I won't call it? Isn't there like technically like three gods of death? There's one that's like you know for like stuff being revived, re- uh, necromancy, that kind of stuff. There's one for like you know everything uh, is gonna die. You must give them proper graves, kill all necromancy. And there's like one that I won't call. Yeah, I've got one written down actually, and he's my favorite one. He's called Velsharun, and he's like the one of like necromancy and necromancers. But there's also mm-hmm. Kalemvor. And he's like the neutral god, and he 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 replaced Merkel, who was like an evil god that came before him. But like Kelimvor is kind of like a neutral guy, like he's not evil. I don't think he supports necromancy. I'm not totally sure on that actually, but I can tell you about Velsharun, and he was basically like a wizard of Thay back way back way in like the the time when. Zaztam wasn't a Zolkia yet and they were like rivals and somehow Zaztam kicked him out and he went on to become the, the Zolkia of Necromancy instead anyway like Vilsharun went off and did his own thing and somehow he, he became like a god and he got the portfolio of Necromancy and like I can tell you a little bit about his thing so his whole like doctrine or whatever is basically like knowledge is power and how this works is is because knowledge over life and death gives power over living and unliving things and he like thinks that life and death are two two states of existing and like they're kind of like transitory you can go between them kind of like like a light switch like on and off you can just switch backwards and forwards between them yeah <clears throat> and they see like the body as a vehicle that's either running on positive or negative energy and they're, they're all about learning more about necromancy. So the researchers of Vilsharun love to make new undead for like research purposes. And then they like just let these undead go. And you know, like the, the undead just wander around and cause havoc and whatever. And like others work as embalmers and grave diggers, secretly giving corpses back to the, the, the priesthood for, you know, all the kind of necromancy stuff. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, god of necromancy in D&D and, and also the only one that I kind of know anything about. The others I don't know that much about. Um, I'm thinking now. Because when it comes because when it comes to like uh, in fantasy settings, typically you can't, I can't help but think that when it comes to like general fantasy or more typical fantasy, especially with gods it's, you'll have it wherein um, you'll have say the holy light or more sort of good morally arbitrarily good um people will have a more closer connection to their gods compared to say an evil one with their god or like say say you got a guy who's doing necromancy like he will be defeated by a paladin and that per- paladin will worship this god who has a close relationship with these people who has this 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 and this like it's a very kind of intertwined but when it comes to more darker forces i can't help but think that there does seem to be a disparity wherein you'll have it where because it it'll be darker it'll be more understood or it'll be more unknown and it won't be greatly explored in depth the relationship between uh say a necromancy guard and its followers although i could be talking out my ass because i can also think of examples that have the complete opposite so yeah take everything we say with a grain of salt yeah <laughs> A lot. I keep in mind. A lot of this is subjective. Like you could, you could listen to this for world building stuff, and you could just like come away from it wanting to do your own thing, and that could work better than anything we've said. Yeah, like we're just about giving you food for force, really. Mm-hmm. 
Speaking of food for thought, uh, when it comes to world building, um, and when it comes to world building with with like necromantic gods and deities and so on and so forth, any anything that we should say, anything that any kind of advice or any kind of say things that we can say that would help people when it comes to world building. Well, I saw one good idea written on our on my Discord in the world building uh, channel. The idea comes from Lan. She's like a new member in our Discord, and she came forward with the idea that like that a god can be sort of created just through the people believing in it. So like the god doesn't exist, but it manifests from belief. I found that like a pretty interesting idea because it it means that basically if there's no believers anymore, then the god dies out. But if people started believing again, it would come back. And that could be like a kind of interesting plot device. Like imagine for a second that ancient people worship some kind of evil god something happens and like all the worshippers get killed off and this god ceases to exist for that for this reason and then everyone's like cool and dandy and like picking flowers and whatever for like a few thousand years but then someone goes and does some archaeological dig and he finds like some ancient book that's hidden away and like he reads that book and holy shit he learns about um Aktof, the fucking god of all bad shit that's going to happen to you. And then, because he's got one believer again, this god has been brought back into existence. And that's like the, the whole plot kind of thing. I don't know if that's a good so, idea. That sounds, that sounds like one of the, what, that sounds like one of the unironic best sorts of premises for a comedy anime. <laughs> like, like, no, no, just, just imagine, like, imagine it like you've got a guy who's, who's exploring like a, some kind of ancient ruins and he finds a tome and he reads it. And then suddenly you've got like this little piece of glowing uh, piece of shit that just appears out of nowhere going, behold, I am evil, I am, oh shit. <laughs> and his, his act off has come back and, and so the two have a bit of dialogue and it's like, oh, so you're a god of evil. Yeah, I'm not really much of that anymore because everyone stopped believing in me why <laughs> well it's a bit of a long story and then it's just sort of like could transition onto anyway kind of going off that, yeah. if, so if somebody if somebody like wants to take that and, and work please do because that sounds absolutely hilarious just yeah. act, act off the god of evil who's actually not so evil yeah I, I thought it was a pretty cool idea I hadn't heard I've done I've done a few stories with that, and I'm gonna like, like archaeologists exploring ancient place, inadvertently becomes like a the champion of this long dead god who's been waiting and is really really weak and wants to re and wants to reinstate themselves, so they've got no choice but to take on this random person. Oh, well, guess what? You're my champion now. You have no choice in this. And then you got the person there who's sort of having to deal with it. Yeah, I guess like the problem with that kind of system of gods is like every whack job believing anything would basically be manifesting a god isn't that sort of like in the warp in uh 40k like it's any any like you'll have it wherein um say with the tower and with the concept of the greater good it's like i sw i think in one of the uh books don't don't take this for full in all seriousness but i remember that um there was a thing in in the law that apparently a bunch of tau related people went in, uh, into the warp or close to the warp and an entity that were meant to represent the greater god came and saved them and just sort of yeeted them out like but then the thing with that is that all of those are forced into the same place into the same domain and when it comes to like with elder scrolls for example uh, with daedric princes they've all got their own dom uh, domains and realms so with that how many small little pocket dimensions do you think would exist at any given time? It'd be infinite, wouldn't it? I think it just kind of comes, like, once you reach a certain high power. And, like, if we're talking about, like, the Elder Scroll, Elder Scroll series, then their kind of stuff, it's basically, like, after you reach a certain height of power, you basically get to have uh, more or less whatever you want. Like, there was, like, the, um, you know, uh, first it was the Ideal Masters, who I think it was it said like they originally basically like a bunch of normal guys, but then they got so much power they basically uh no longer needed a physical form transcended and made their own plane where all soul gems go go towards. And there's also Mana Marco, 
uh, a guy who was originally a living person, but he did some shit, ascended, and became the god of worms. And that's he kind of like reigns over the uh, the revenant's moon. And that's because you have kind of his own shit. I, I thought he was the moon. I I, I can't recall. It's like he either yeah. is the moon or he resides, he, or he owns. I thought he was a lich, shit. wasn't he? Yeah, oh. but he turned into a moon. He he was a lich, but he also became a god. Was right. He also an elf. It. it he, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's a, uh, I feel, oh, I I remember now. He took advantage during the activation of the Numerian right. and turned himself into a moon, so that. He could create soul gems and be a god. It's kind of weird, but it had to involve Chim, which is yeah. a bag of worms. I can't, like, when it comes to Elder Scrolls lore, I both love it and hate it at the same time. I just, I love it because of how deep it is and how sort of it works because it works, but also hate it because you read some of it and then you, you just come away thinking to yourself, what have I just read? What in the fuck is this? What, why, why, why? Yeah, it's, it, it, I, I also like. For- it's it gets weird because like I was also trying to like look up on it. I think also that there's something where like cataclysm or something like that. I, don't, I completely forgot the name. That's not the word for it. But like uh, there was like sh- time was shattered or like there was multiple timelines or something happening. And then Matter Marco is around there, and I was like, meh. Yeah, that was during Morrowind when the Numerian was activated. It, it doesn't help that the guy who wrote the lore during that time did a lot of hard drugs while writing it. Uh, uh, I was going to joke about that. I was, gonna, I, was, I was thinking to myself earlier, like I was thinking um, like earlier on today, for example, I was thinking of like world building shit and I figured to myself, you know what, if I could afford drugs, I probably would have gotten all of this world building done by now. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome what people on drugs come up with. To be fair, <laughs> right? But, uh, it, and, it annoys I, me so much because you'll see so many interesting things, and you'll find out that the people behind it are on drugs. What about the rest of us that can't afford drugs? What about the rest of us that can't even get drugs? Like, <laughs> like imagine imagine all of the creative content we could have if everyone had easy access to acid. Fuck's sake! Oh my! my I, I have a I have another question about the gods for you guys' setting. What is your opinion on them being omniscient, like knowing everything? Is that how they are in your setting, or are they not? I would say, like, in my setting, they're most likely going to be demigods, and no, they wouldn't be omniscient, but I, I like the idea of them being able to know everything that their uh, worshippers know. I think that's really cool. You gave me that idea, by the way, and I think I'm going to run with that. So, like, a god wouldn't know what his enemy god is thinking, but he... It's a bit like, you know, the god is playing like a fucking RTS game. You can see everything that your little units can see. That's kind of like what I'd be going for. And every RTS is a god game. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically it is because you're playing with life and killing people. Yeah. Yeah. I try to think. With... I'm trying to... Yeah. I don't think they'd be have total omniscience. I don't think they can see everything. It'd probably be something like, like that. It's like someone have to let them actually like let them see, at least in other places. They basically can be able to just it, it just have eyes and just kind of go wherever they want. And uh, they, they, they'll also be able to like sense like strong magical presence though. Like they can sense like strong magical presence and whether uh, what kind of type it is. And probably like the corresponding god can go over there. It's like, ooh, what's this? <laughs> see with mine it's I, i've not fully decided yet when it comes to that like with mine is there's a fair bit of stuff on the magic and cosmic scale that is because i'm having to redo a fair bit of it but i mean when it comes to normal gods people believe in i guess yes and no like they would they would kind of know what their followers know i guess so i mean having a god that is omniscient would mean that they know everything and to, to have that would tell me at least that that god would know everything if there's something that's happening 10 light years away that god would be aware of it which can and cannot cause issues when it comes to explaining things but i mean i mean in mine i'm working on like a biological supercomputer that a bunch of um insect people have that kind of blue screens and everyone gets really pissed off about it so it's and that is meant to be omniscient but uh, it it how, what kind what kind of omniscience are we dealing with? Like, is it sort of Yogg Sothoth omniscience, wherein it knows everything, everything, and everything, or is it more kind of the omniscience that somebody on 4chan would have? Like, oh yeah, I know everything. Well, um, if it's a computer, right? Um, yeah, and it's like... Uh, it's like 
It's like a biological. It's it's meant to be. It's meant to be like a cloud sort of saving system. As in, right. you would plug yourself into, like you would plug your um, body into it, and it would save a copy of your mind. So then, when you die, it would inject that mind into a um, larvae, which would then grow up and stuff. Well, here's the thing with computers: is that they're really good at like predicting heaps of outcomes, mm. and like like that's how like the the early uh, chess computers worked. Like they um, they like read thousands and thousands of moves into the future, and then they'd say, "Well, this move out of all the other thousands of moves that I've pre predetermined is the most likely one or the best one or whatever." So they're kind of like they've got a really good predictive power and maybe that's how the the omniscience works like they don't know for certain but they're able to think so well that they can predict really well and this in a way is kind of like omniscience well uh, in that kind of sense in my setting there are deep like deities have the capability to see possible futures as well as some powerful mortals as it comes with divination magic but a caveat is they're not really good at predicting because when a bunch of people can see potential futures and are trying to nudge it, it changes the possible really futures. hard to do it. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like the whole thing of into it's when it comes to time travel, it gets really fucky very quickly. As in, oh, I've I've just seen a future. We need to stop something, but oh, you just yeah. have what? How? No, I haven't. We've not we've not stopped it, mate. You've seen the future. You've time you've travel. already changed the event because you've seen it. Well, it's not so much backwards time travel, it's just like predicted events mm. more so. So you can't go back in time. Well, I don't know if I want that yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to stand on that. But it's more like you can see the paths of the future and some things will coalesce and there's like, because there's semi-fate in my world. But it'd be like just predictive, basically, with your knowledge. And then it's a bunch of people fucking around with it. So it's constantly changing. Yeah. Right. Imagine, like, imagine if you have a god that can see possible futures and it just like picks, like, it doesn't see a true future. Instead, he just sees like dozens and dozens and dozens of different branches, and he or she just picks the best one. <laughs> That's basically- like, imagine, like, imagine if, uh, like, imagine if, like, the planet is sort of going along a linear path, and you'll have a god there, just sort of like at the helm. Uh, on the wheel, just sort of like driving it, just like, oh, well, let's go in that future. <laughs> Well, just, that's how it works. It's like the branching in my world. It's not like a set one timeline. It's like a bunch of branches that are possibilities. That's like a really awesome thing that I didn't quite think about. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Like the fact of all these possible branches, but the people working towards those like branches, like give certain ones more strength or more like chance of happening. And so like you can predict heaps of shit, but you never quite know which future is going to take place i think that's pretty damn awesome so thanks for bringing that up and then finally i also just came to me afterlives do your deities all have their own afterlife so there's set like cosmology of how deities like guide you in death Hmm. that's tricky when it comes to demigods isn't it See, with mine, there is one in mine, um, in my world. Like, I'm still working through this one. I'm working through so much fucking much. It's like, what, what is true? What's not true? But with, with mine, it's like, it's the case when you'll have these people that basically believe in this higher power and it kind of like has uh, biblic- biblically accurate angels and shit in it, right? And like this higher power will uh, sometimes visit people's dreams and shag them and then either get impregnated uh-huh. or impregnate people with angels and half, half angels. What the fuck? So you'll have... Yeah, so you'll have like these demigods that are meant to sort of um, have uh, a presence and reinforce belief and good shit and whatnot. But the whole thing of uh, what it is is that um, they don't trust their hum their humanity. They do they do not trust humanity with its future. So instead, they pray to and worship beings above humanity to give them a good life because humans are, are naturally violent terrible creatures so they're kind of like ashamed of their of their humanity and try to work to not be human so what will happen is when they would die they will go to their but they believe that when they die their god will remake them in its image or reincarnate them what actually happens is they die their god fucking eats them and then regurgitates or vomits or whatever them back as an angel that will be changed it will still have a semblance of them but will be very changed and different so it's like imagine. So basically, imagine a big, a big uh, space fart just eating a soul, and it's that fact that it just vomits out like this, um, 
about 10 wheels with about six wings and dozens of eyeballs slapped onto it because fuck it why not so it vomits a shog of basically uh, a, a a christ uh, a, a pg christian discount shock off all right, all right. <laughs> um, but when it comes to my setting that i'm still very much like in the works with and like afterlifes see the thing is like i told you guys on the the magic podcast right i've got like the spirit realm and mm -hmm. like this is how like natural undead form because of like the spirits trying to enter corpses if they want to like experience life again of course it doesn't work out quite like they imagine but i, mm. I guess like in addition to the spirit realm some spirits that worship like a god if gods do indeed exist in my setting i'm not sure yet like if they will exist in this way but like if there are these sort of like non demigod gods like actual gods then presumably they also have like their own afterlifes which are kind of like private spirit realms and like the you've given me a terrible fucking idea now <laughs> it's kind of like you know you've got the 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 budget option and then you've got like the the various paid um paid rooms so if you worship no one then you get go you go to the normal spirit realm but if you spend your your life basically if you spend your, your your actual life worshiping something then you've basically paid for like a luxury suite and like in the afterlife you get you know you get like all, basically if you spend your life simping for this god's only fans it will give you access to its private discord chat exactly <laughs> <laughs> pretty okay. much i think maybe that can work but um... <laughs> okay. yeah 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 oh yeah okay should i tell you the terrible idea i had sure Good. so when it comes to gods um if you have a god that has an actual presence in the world and can change things can alter things can prove its existence then actually having science as we have it these days would be incredibly fucking difficult I can't help but feel because when it comes to proving stuff with evidence and empirical, like you're trying to prove something with evidence to prove that this happens or this, like say you've got a theory and you do a test to prove it. When you've got magic and gods, how do you prove it? Especially when it comes to philosophy, because I can't help but think that after so much time, there will eventually be a God of science, which defeats the purpose of science in a way or would it actually? Hang on, I'm sorry. I, I think, think it depends on your settings, gods. Try and no. think. Depends on settings, and gods usually resign over magic. And it's just because they draw power from magic to a certain extent. To have a god of science is like to basically say, I eat electricity and I breathe longer. <laughs> I mean, I, I could. You could definitely argue in certain settings that because of the laws of physics of that world, magic is just science and it's like a part of the world. It's not like some. Isn't that yeah? That's the way I'm going with my sitting, by the way. Isn't that kind of like an, uh, a thing that people say? It's like, oh yeah, magic is just science. It, 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 magic is just technology that's not understood. Um, it's like it's like I mean, take uh, take tribes in the world that aren't really too modern. Like they'll look at somebody with a gun or somebody or an attack helicopter, and they will attribute it to being a demon or magic. Or say you'll have somebody in a ghillie suit and they'll say it's a monster and so on and so forth. Like this, but we know that there's perfectly logical explanations for it. We know that there's people that have invented those and work on them and use them, but these people don't. You know about cargo cults, right? Cargo cults. Yeah. Oh yeah, those. Okay, I so do. Uh, oh, this has uh, actually got my interest now. Go on, because yeah. So basically. Oh, okay. Okay, you you describe. I I know as well. You you. All right. So, uh, basically, during World War Two, right, you had all that action over the the southeast pacific or whatever right all the right and whatever and yeah. like soldiers and stuff and there were like tribes on that on those islands and oh they they've never, started religions around the findings haven't they 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 had never seen planes and they worshiped these planes as gods because the the planes would fly overhead and they'd drop like cargo down for like troops or whatever right and you know inside this cargo was like cans of beans and shit they're like oh god they're delivering us food and whatever. And so they're like, they made these like elaborate fucking, um, like airports made out of like, uh, you know, like coconuts and, and shit. And, um, like, cause okay. they think they saw like the troops and stuff 
having these airports that would bring planes in. So they think, oh yeah, we'll make our airport and then the plane's going to come and give us food and shit. I hope I... That is both, that is actually, that is hilarious, interesting, but also quite sad. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. cause w- whatever they were worshipping before has probably been lost now. Yeah, they, they, they were worshipping, well, I'm not sure about worshipping, but their, their, their culture was about the, the big man. So like the man with the most stuff was like the the most respected and of course oh uh, okay yeah is it one of those where it's like if you're fat then you're well respected because you can afford to be fat type of ones pretty much and then like the yeah, westerners yeah. came with all their like incredible shit and like that completely mm. upended their system of whatever because i'm just thinking of that scene from star trek now where you'll have like a bunch of natives that just, just stop whatever they're worshiping because there's a they see a starship for the first time so they start worshiping mm. that Hmm. It's kind of more or less what it is, because they basically like because yeah. they, they basically saw like you know all this weird stuff flying overhead, like you know it's all this like foods that come in cans, like all these kind of strange provisions, that kind of stuff. And so basically, basically thought like uh, building an airport or like these kind of things are basically like, the ritual to the kind of like how summon them. And so basically, would try to like recreate like the planes out of some out of certain material. They try to recreate like the airport the. Uh, the headset gear out of like some other metallic material, thinking like just a general shape and idea would let them call upon these strange beings. Yep. Imagine, like, imagine. So you, you break people in plane just just to carry it on, just to help them out. But then, but then they'll get dependent, and when that stops, they'll just yeah. Check this out. Sat- it's like a a satellite dish made out of hay or some shit. Oh, it's see. I've seen. I've seen that picture. Yeah, I've seen that picture before. I've seen pictures like it. I I hadn't known the context until like they've they've built that. Like they've gone out of their Jesus Christ. They have. Yeah. Look, he's got like the coconut headphones, or whatever. Christ. The fake phone made of wood. <laughs> it's fascinating. But that is actually that's incredible. Like. The amount of detail and effort that they've gone to do this as well. I mean, to them, it's probably life and death, so, that, so they'll see it as they have to, but Christ. Okay. And, uh, and the weird thing is, is they keep believing this, even though no fucking cargo boxes are coming anymore. I don't know if they still believe it, but they, they believed it for a damn long time. I was going to say, like, don't, wouldn't they have evidence of it? I mean, wouldn't they still see planes every now and again? Wouldn't they see, like, airports and whatnot? Because if to make any of these, you would need to see it, surely. That's like, they would need to see a phone. They would need to see headphones for the coconuts. They would need to see a satellite dish. They would have to see an airport. Yeah, I'm not too sure on that. I guess anyone who's interested who's listening, just Google cargo cults. And just like read up on it because there's heaps of information, and like I like how I like how it's called a cult. It's like oh yeah, no, it's not religion. It's a cult. <laughs> yeah. Technically, any religion can be a cult if you think about it properly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to finish that because lots of people might get a tad bit upset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when it comes to necromancy, I'm just thinking. So when it comes to necromancy, imagine if say. You know the whole thing with the Spanish flu, right? Like, uh, the, the Spaniards took the Spanish flu to X place and a bunch of people died because of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if you had that, but with necromancy. So imagine if you've got aliens or some kind of space creature or some something from space that sort of makes undead. So then people would start worshipping whatever caused that as, like, a bad god, wanting it to, you know, fuck off. Would Would that be a thing? So you mean like people dress up as skeletons and shit because of the? No, it's it could could do. I meant like as in actual sorts of skeletons and zombies walk around and so on and so forth. But yeah, like you could yeah you could have like people dressing up as them. So like it could be the case when if you dress up as them, you avoid them because they think that you're one of their own. I mean that's where traditions like Halloween originate from. Yeah. Well, with aliens. No, with um. <laughs> They believed that, that was when the spirit world was closer to our world, so they dress up as the kind of spirits, so the spirits would leave them alone. Yeah, well, right. evil spirits would leave them alone. 
Oh. Uh, question. So when it when it comes to um, gods and concepts and deities, so with my setting, I'm thinking of having it where at night time undead will be a lot stronger. As in, they will have a. They'll be much better. They'll be much tougher. They'll be much more energetic compared to daytime. And like with um, Dungeons and Dragons, like you can see it in the anime. I don't like the anime, but you can see it in the anime if you ever if you ever want to waste your time. Um, like if you don't want to waste your time at three o'clock in the morning looking at meme videos and you want to waste it like looking at a series that may be kind of edgy, then you can watch that. But um, you can see it where in Undead that touch the sun will basically just disappear. And you can see it in um, what else was there? But was I can't I can't think about. It. But what I was going to say is you could have it when you'll have a undead sort of god that represents the night, and you could have it when you'll have a good one that represents the day. So night could be for death, undead, spooky shit, so on and so forth, represented by the moon. Whilst the day could have it where in growth, prosperity, change, warmth. So like so on and so forth. So like when you die, you're cold. So it could be that night is because of that. And with it being dark, it leads into the whole thing of the unknown. But day could be more sort of, oh yeah, it's daytime. It's sun. You can see everything. Crops are growing. Everyone's happy. It's warm. It's good. Thumbs up. Yeah. Hmm. I like I like how I say all of that, and then you just say yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was, to be honest, I was fucking thinking too much about this guy with the damn wooden glasses on. Oh, can, you put, can you put the picture of that on the on the podcast so people will be like seeing this person's amazing, amazing face? Like, if, if it's um, like you gotta leave that yeah in as well in the podcast when you edit it. <laughs> it's, it's it's not bro. It's just you. Yeah, yeah. I will put it in if it's public domain or whatever, but if it's under any kind of, like, license, then no, because it's too much hassle. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna, the thing I love most about this is you'll have people that will go their entire lives being completely forgotten. Within 100 or 200 years, they will be just be forgotten. Facebook doesn't count. Fuck off. But you'll have it wherein, when it comes to this, you've got people in, this, in these pictures, like with this one with a coconut-like um, thing that he's wearing, yeah. He will be immortalized and remembered forever, not just not just because of it's funny, but because of the scientific and historical relevance to it. Like that person will be forever, like pe like that when that person sort of has kids or and so on and so forth. Like in a hundred years' time, they can look and see, oh yeah, I'm related to that person. Yeah. And they'll probably they'll probably think it's magic. They'll probably actually start worshiping the laptop it's shown on. Probably. I was going to ask something, but it slipped my mind. God damn it. Okay, question. If we had... So when it comes to a sci-fi world, like, we've talked a lot when it comes to fantasy stuff, and with fantasy, it's more mostly medieval um, before, after fantasy. When it comes to science fiction with gods, uh, like, say, so we take Star Wars, for example, with gods and deities and necromancy, what could we do with sci-fi? What could we do with science fiction to... To gods? Yeah. In, so you'll have people with laser weaponry, you'll have people with starships, you'll have the, this, you'll have that. Also, necromancy and gods. Man, I gotta be honest, like, I do not see necromancy fitting in well with sci fi, and neither do I see it fitting in well with gods somehow. Like, for me, like, necromancy gets made completely obsolete by robots just because robots mm. are fucking insanely awesome. I mean, technically, necromancy is obsolete with demons as well, but we don't really talk about that because there's things that they both do and can't do. You can make machines that are like part like robot, part undead, and the benefit of that would be it's really hard to get a robot to like actually move, and it has to be really complexly made. But if you just take an undead and augment the shit out of it, it's much easier to do. And they already are built to live in space because they don't need air or food, so you could just go and make giant tomb worlds out there on inhospitable planets. Going on Base also, undead become become shitty Jason Voorhees movie. <laughs> going alongside that, when it comes to undead in sci-fi, uh, it's a lot cheaper. Because take with say you have a more sort of capitalist um, sci-fi setting, you can have it wherein because you have to manually mine the 
stuff to make robots with you have to make all of the all of the difficult like special things to put the slot in to plug in like the motherboards the chips the personality cores the um you know like the, the stuff to actually make it function with an undead you don't have to do that with an undead you just wave your uh, magic magitech staff you just say a few words job done yeah. Anyway, to the aspects of God you were asking about, in a sci-fi setting, I don't think it fundamentally changes very much. I think you could see more gods based on technology, like gods of progress, and a lot of more influence of like outsider, like void gods, like eldritch beings, because it's in the void of space kind of thing. Right, so imagine if you had that. Imagine if you had like a sci-fi setting where people... They like, will have like these massive Lovecraftian entities that people would just fucking worship. Yeah. Like the like it, it could even be the case where in these ones uh, like these entities will just do whatever they want. It could be that they have no rhyme nor reason to what they do, but they but because they are above mortal life, it's assumed that they have a certain understanding of what they are doing that no one else does. In actuality, they could all just be trolls memeing everyone. <laughs> um if any... Cthulhu if Cthulhu was a troll. Are there any settings in sci-fi where <laughs> gods play a prominent role? I can't really think of one. Would the Force uh, be one? Star because, Finder. like, yeah, would the Force yeah. from Star Wars be one? I guess. Well, no, no, not Star Wars. Starfinder. It's the sci-fi version of Pathfinder. Oh right. I don't uh, know anything about that. Same. Uh, it's eh. As a game system. I mean, I mean, forty k. But the thing with that is like. Uh, I mean, I mean, I count the chaos gods as actual gods. I mean, that's making more of like um, the was it the, the emperor of mankind? Well, and, the emperor isn't yeah. a god. He's just like because he didn't even want to be worshipped as one. No, nah, he's like he's like the apex of the species, but still, he's like a demigod. Maybe he's got he's got a presence in the warp. So even if he was to die, like in the warp, he would still have a great sort of thing with him. If anything, him dying would actually make him into a god. Maybe that's kind of iffy on the lore, but uh, mm. isn't it like the Lord dying? dying anymore, so no, it's not the Lord dying. Isn't he dying? So yeah, the that throne is happen. failing. Yeah, the throne is failing. He's a bit dead. Um, kind of like the Imperium is dying. Well, he, he's not dead because he's still uh, able to keep the Astronomicons on. Fair enough. What's this there? Hey guys, I'm thinking of Borderlands, but yeah. I was just gonna say, like, we've got about 15 minutes left. Do we want to start like finalizing? Um, good do. What do you want to? What, what do you want to talk about for the last bit? Basically, just like after everything we've discussed, you guys, the settings, like, are you making any changes or like have you? come up with anything new that you're going to implement based on this discussion or just anything like what you think of what's what we've discussed and how you can use or not use it more or less uh for mine i'm probably gonna make some changes because it's a very much work in progress i'm gonna have to mull over what was discussed here to see what uh what i kind of want to integrate it very well might integrate some of the ideas i heard here any ones in particular stand out? Uh, I had a few. Um, I had a few that I really, really like the sound of. Uh, for me, I guess ones that stand out, I really do like the... Oh, what was it called? What was it? What was it? What was it? It's like, say, for example, that if you believe, like, if you believe in something, like, there will be a kind of... Um, it will have a presence sort of and it would be quite small so like you know you know the one where in um say a god is dead and no one believes in it then you find it and you believe in it so it'll be a thing again yeah so like those ones so you could have one person that will believe in something completely stupid but it will still technically be a thing that would exist in a way yeah. oh uh a combination thought between two topics the idea of believing in something until it becomes it real it be until it becomes it re uh, becomes real and cargo cults. Imagine oh. an airplane god. That would be a Christ. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine an airplane god made out of coconuts. <laughs> Emotionally. 
Yeah, I might integrate some of that belief one. I've been because I was iffy on it before of having also stuff like there's certain spirits in the world that become gods because people believe they did and that's how they got their power. So if people stopped believing them, they'd slowly depower until they were weak spirits again. Yeah. And I might integrate that into the cosmology of it. For me, um, I think I really like the idea that you brought up Spook where like the gods know what their followers know. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to take that for my thing. I'm probably going to have more demigods than like um, sort of real gods because I think demigods are like easier to explain and also like they've got like a physical presence and uh, I was going to say something else what was it um, oh yeah for the for the gods which aren't demigods I think that the idea of them like people believing in them makes them manifest I, I really like that idea for like the the intangible gods but I have to think about the what does affect mental illness yeah like I'm um, I need to think about limits on that because I'm really unsure about how, like, if every person is believing wacky shit, then, like, there's a billion wacky gods. Well, which ones get to be powerful? Is it based on, like, how many people believe in the same it should be done. God? It should be done democratically. <laughs> I think it, it, it's like a critical mass kind of thing. It's like at one yeah. point, like, just so many people believe it that it finally is willed. Um, when it comes to that, like, would would evil gods be the 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 ones born from mental illness, or would it be the more Lovecraftian ones born from mental illness? Like, say for example, you have so many people that will suffer from the same medical uh, mental health problem, but they'll have completely different ways of going about it. But because it's the same thing, it could manifest itself as as in they will believe they will all think and believe in different things, but because it's the same problem, it could manifest as something along those lines. Yeah, I think so. That's an interesting point, like mental illness and what people that are like suffering from severe psychosis think about. Mm. It would be Lovecraftian shit. Like they'd be the ones seeing Azazoth and all that shit, in my opinion. I'm just thinking now, like, because when it comes, when it, there's a big fear of the unknown and there's a big fear as to us to being so above humanity that you can't imagine them. Well, about the beings that you can imagine, you just need to be in the in the incorrect state of mind. Yeah, because that can be quite scary in itself. It definitely would be. I, I've never had a psychosis, but I imagine it's absolutely terrifying. Or would that very quickly go into edgy territory? I am suffering from a psychosis, so everyone will suffer from it. <laughs> I don't know. Take here. And there's nothing wrong with edgy shit as long as it's like not overdone and it fits the world. Looking at you, oh, oh well, fits the world. Okay, then. <laughs> I was gonna like I was gonna say Warhammer because of all the spiky shit that Chaos has. Like you'll have people with more spikes than common sense, but I mean it fits the world. So it because it, it does. It's what you ex what you'd expect from it. I think as long as it's cool and like people like it, well, it's a winning mm. strategy. I guess, yeah, I guess as long as it's that and it doesn't go into stupidly edgy territory, as in stuff that a teenager would make. Can Nobody think? understands my pain. My I bleed a thousand black tears of uh, of infinite sorrow. Yeah. My heart is a glass co is a glass crater, and I have filled it with methanol. <laughs> Fucking hell. Leave that to the players if you make a tabletop system or uh to do <laughs> <laughs> all right guys any final statements world building have fun with it like wait, like obviously research gods research like how people sort of go about it when it comes to gods make sure that when it comes to gods um c keep consistency with with it i guess but also keep in mind that people will worship or people will worship the things that they want you have gods of agriculture you'll have gods of good harvest you'll have gods of fertility you'll have gods of light or you'll have gods of warmth or goodness or peace so on and so you'll have gods for good things and you'll have gods gods for bad things people want good things people want good things for themselves and bad things for the people that they don't like 
Hence, you'll have, uh, say, Creating God, for example. It's, oh yeah, he benefits me because I'm good and holy, but he's going to shackle everyone in hell because they're not so good and holy. Stuff like that. So it's you'll have a God that will be all merciful and all loving until it isn't. Hmm. So we'll be sure to have fun with it. And when it comes to necromancy gods, or when it comes to gods that portray necromancy or undead or so on and so forth, it could either be that the God has done it or made it, or it could be that the God is invented as a consequence of something already existing and people want to justify it or people want to explain it. Why is there undead? Oh, God in the sky has done it. So on and so forth. What about you, Mr. Spook? No, I think I've said what I wanted to say. All right. So hi for hentai? Yeah, that's pretty much all I have. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you found that beneficial for your world building. I certainly did find it good. I've got some new ideas to think about. I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. Thank you, Brad. Thanks.